This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Next topic is dipole induced dipole forces. This type of attractive forces operate between the polar molecules having the permanent dipole and the molecules lacking permanent dipole. Okay, this type of attractive forces operate between the polar molecules. So, here uh, polar molecules and lacking uh, permanent dipole. Permanent dipole of the polar molecule induces dipole on the electrically neutral molecules by deforming its electronic cloud. Okay, see here uh, permanent dipole of the polar molecule permanent dipole of the polar molecule that uh, polar molecule it dipole on the electrically neutral molecule it deforming its electronic cloud which is uh, i can shown in this figure this is the permanent dipole of polar molecule this is non polar molecule okay so thus an induced dipole is developed in the other molecule in this case also interactive energy is uh, which is uh, interactive energy which is uh, proportional to 1 divided by 1 divided by r power 6 where r is a distance between the two molecules induced dipole moment depends upon the dipole moment present in the permanent dipole and polarizability of the electrically neutral molecule so molecules of larger size can be easily polarized high polarized increased strength of attractive interactions so here this is the permanent dipole which induces the dipole and this other molecule induced dipole in a non-polar molecule also so this is only they are telling in this scales also cumulative effect of dispersion forces and dipole induced dipole interactions exist okay so this is the dipole uh, as shown in this figure dipole induced dipole interaction between permanent dipole and induced dipole okay so which is a permanent dipole and induced dipole next concept is hydrogen bond I think you are familiar with the hydrogen bond. We know that this is found in the molecules in which highly polar uh, that is uh, NH bond, oxygen with hydrogen, hydrogen and this is fluorine, they are present. So although hydrogen bonding is regarded as being limited to only N, O and F, okay, but species such as chlorine may also participate in hydrogen bonding. And uh, you should know uh, that uh, energy of hydrogen bond varies between 10 to 100. See, energy. Energy of hydrogen bond. Energy of hydrogen bond varies between 10 to 100. Okay. So, 10 to 100 kilojoule per mole. This is quite a significant amount of energy. Therefore, hydrogen bonds are powerful force in determining the structure and properties of many compounds. For example, proteins and nucleic acids. Okay. See. Here, they are used for determining the powerful force. The hydrogen bonds are powerful forces okay and uh, which is used to determine the structure which is used to determine the structure and uh, properties of many compounds example proteins and nucleic acids okay proteins and nucleic 
acids and the strength of hydrogen bond is determined by the coulombic interaction between the lone pair electrons of the electronegative atom of one molecule and the hydrogen atom of other molecule okay see uh, once again i will uh, explain you about this strength of the hydrogen bond okay if there is uh, this is the en and this is h if want we want to determine the strength of the hydrogen bond this is determined by the coulombic interaction between the lone pair electrons of the electronegative atom of one molecule and the hydrogen atom of the other molecule okay so here there are the lone pair lone pair electrons on one molecule this is the nitrogen okay so the lone pair present in the nitrogen molecule and the next one is uh, the electronegative of atom so lone pair electrons of electronegative atom of one molecule and the hydrogen atom of other molecule so this is the hydrogen atom of other molecule the strength which is determined by these so following uh, i will show one diagram which shows the formation of the hydrogen bond so this is showing the formation of hydrogen bond like okay this is h okay so this is about the how the uh, diagram will uh, we can represent using the diagram uh, okay i think so you got now one idea about this what do you and you should know what do you mean by hydrogen bond any of the molecules that will be combined with the hydrogen any element okay the so some of these we are specifying these this is limited hydrogen bonding is limited to n o and f but some times with is uh, with the chlorine also it uh, participate then the, you should know this is the energy 10 to 100 kilojoule per mole okay and next the uh, we can determine powerful forces which is used to determine the structure and properties of the many compounds and this is the night example i am considering this is the how it is uh, determined the strength of the hydrogen bond and how we can represent the hydrogen bond okay next next topic is thermal energy okay so i think so do you have any idea about thermal energy thermal energy thermal energy is the energy of body arising from motion of its atoms or molecules see you but it is the arising when the atoms or molecules this is considered the atom which is in a motion so the energy of a body arising from the motion it is arising from the atoms that is called thermal energy when the atoms or molecules are in motion it is directly proportional to the temperature of the substance thermal energy this is a thermal energy which is proportional to the temperature okay proportional to the temperature of the okay substance and uh, it is the measure of average kinetic energy of the particles of the matter and is thus responsible for movement of particles okay it is the measure of average kinetic energy of the particles of the matter and is this responsible for moment of particle this moment of particle is called thermal motion moment moment of particles is uh, known as thermal motion next concept is intermolecular forces versus the thermal interactions intermolecular forces tend to keep the molecules together okay uh, it is intermolecular force means they are tend to keep the molecules together but thermal energy of the molecules tends to keep them apart so this is the difference between these two what is the uh, intermolecular forces and uh, the versus thermal interactions okay you know that three states of matter are the result of balance between the intermolecular forces and the thermal energy of the molecules so the three states of matter what we are uh, using that is result of balance between the intermolecular forces and the thermal energy of the molecules so when molecular interactions are very weak 
when the in molecular interactions are very weak molecules don't cling together to make liquid or solid unless thermal energy is reduced by lowering the temperature okay when molecular interactions interactions are very weak molecules don't cling don't cling together okay to make solid or liquid liquid or solid unless thermal energy is reduced by lowering the temperature okay unless thermal energy is reduced by lowering the temperature okay and next is however when thermal energy of molecules is reduced by lowering the temperature the gases can very easily liquefied predominance of thermal energy and the molecular interaction energy of substance uh, in three status is uh, depicted okay so how it is depicted it has shown in this figure predominance of intermolecular interactions that is gas to liquid liquid to solid again solid to liquid and liquid to gas predominance of thermal energy okay so this is about the intermolecular forces versus thermal interactions next i will move on to the next concept that is the gaseous state okay so here in gaseous state this is the simplest state of matter okay a look at the periodic table i will explain you about the periodic table before going to that here see this is the periodic table only 11 elements exist as gases under normal conditions okay so uh, look at the table here so only 11 uh, elements are present okay so the gaseous state is characterized by the some of the uh, following uh, properties these are the some uh, physical properties uh, of the gaseous state so gases are highly compressible okay the first one is gases are highly compressible and the second one is gases exert pressure equally in all directions so this is a uh, consider the container as uh, you know that all the gas molecules are very how they are moving uh, very uh, freely they are moving okay there is no that much of uh, attraction in between them so that is very compressible and uh, the whatever the pressure exert is equal in all directions okay so which is equal in all the directions so gases have much lower density than the solids and liquids they are having much lower density the volume and the shape of the gases are not fixed you know that that is no occupying it is not occupying the volume and there is no shape for the gas and this assume volume and uh, a shape of the container okay so gases mix evenly and completely in all proportions without any mechanical aid they mix evenly and completely in all the proportion okay so these are the some physical properties of the gas okay and then uh, some of these properties like pressure volume temperature and mass are very important because the relationships between these variables describe the state of the gas it's very important to know that that is pressure volume temperature and mass are very important okay so this is about the gaseous state and uh, you should know that uh, this is the uh, okay only 11 elements exist in this periodic 
table okay and uh, later on i will explain you all the gas laws uh, which will uh, come okay so that is uh, there are uh, so two uh, three or uh, more gas laws will come okay next topic is the gas laws